got work to do. Welcome to Highway to Hell, a supernatural podcast. I'm Christine. And I'm Kristen. And today we're talking about season six, episode two, called Two and a Half Men. Yeah, I <laughs> I was gonna say, I know you weren't looking forward to this, and your yeah just like said it all. <laughs> well, it's funny because I like I was listening back to the episode, uh, episode one, and uh, I, I remembered I had said that. But after watching it, I kind of like it. I like this episode, actually. Okay, cool, because I didn't hate it. It was better than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> I I think what I re- remembered hating was um Samuel. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and that whole thing. Uh-huh. Um. Because, I don't know, I'm just, I'm so over the Campbells already. And... No, I know, I was just going to say, well, the Campbells suck, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. they're not fun. They're not fun No! I was not sorry to see one of them die. <laughs> like, you know, like, I, I don't know if we were supposed to care or not, but I did not care. I literally was watching the episode and was like, okay, bye. <laughs> yeah, I have no idea if we were supposed to care about that at all, but I, the same. I definitely did not care. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. No, don't care. Um, so, if what we're talking about so far is confusing and you need a reminder of what this episode was about, <laughs> this is the IMDb description. It says, When four families are killed and their babies are missing, Sam finds that a security company may be involved in the case and summons Dean to help him bring the baby of a fifth slaughtered family to Samuel. However, they are chased by a powerful shapeshifter that wants the baby, and they discover that the baby is a new breed. A new new breed? Yeah. Yeah. Which I, that's making assumptions, right? Like, we don't know if this is, like, a new thing or not that they do. Yeah, that's news to me. Yeah, so whoever wrote this uh, synopsis and posted on IMDb was uh, being a little a little presumptuous. Right. Yeah, I just assumed it was, in fact, like, <laughs> like it was the mom who got killed was just, having a little extramarital affair and happened to get it on with a shapeshifter. Uh, oh, wait, well, wait, 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 we, we learned that, right? Yeah. And then I think they were, well, they were doing that on purpose to get the other babies too. So I, a, a new breed, I don't know, because they, the way they talked about it in the episode was like, oh, I guess this is what shapeshifters do to like procreate or multiply but we didn't know it Mm -hmm. yeah it's all it's all new information for us about how they in fact are created it's not like they're Mm -hmm. banging each other Um, (laughs) to make shapeshifter babies i guess that still has to come from humans which is weird well and i'm trying to remember now Like, when we first saw shapeshifters back in, you know, season one, season two, Mm -hmm. did we get the inkling that their true nature is not, in fact, human-like? What do you mean? Like, did we get the sense, I felt like we got the sense, like, especially in Skin in the first season, that shapeshifters, if you take away, like, them looking like another human being they just look like monsters like really oh, right like there's some other creature underneath right yeah that's kind of the sense that i got too from that but this is making me think uh Maybe that in not. fact they yeah they do look like humans it's just more of like um they are humans with a little extra touch mm-hmm. or maybe what that person who wrote that IMDb description is insinuating 
that they they created some sort of half breed yeah yeah that could be what they're thinking and I can't help but think like so far this whole season just makes me think that ever since uh you know Sam and Dean saved the world from the apocalypse and everything like things were reset that it's still it's like a an alternate universe basically that they that that is the world now so like all of the Mm. monsters are behaving differently than they were and um like the the normal rules don't apply so they just keep finding out like new and different things that that are going on yeah I guess I I I think even when I watched this show the first time I got more of the sense that they're just adding on more information Mm -hmm. and I'm trying to I don't know I'm trying to think of like another show that does things like this where it's just like oh well you thought you knew everything about (laughs) this but actually you know their great grandfather is this and that's very soap opera yeah yeah (laughs) right delving deeper and deeper into yeah um yeah it's very like pretty little liars like (laughs) one god i was just thinking about that show too like why did i waste my entire life it felt like on that show Jesus <laughs> you're not the only one I have other friends who who wasted just as much of their life on it there, many many have people the same amount of regret as I do <laughs> I think it's probably like regret but also it's just like a guilty pleasure yeah it was definitely a guilty pleasure but it was it was not but it wasn't the same as like Twilight which I, I have been just binging like every twilight thing i've been watching the movies the extended editions the behind the scenes all because (laughs) i'm like reading midnight sun right now Uh and i'm just like on a twilight binge yeah i gotta tell you that came up today in in the meeting i had with my team at work we're all talking about like things about ourselves and uh someone brought up like a fandom i think it was megan and um someone was like oh well are you into twilight and i was like no i'm a harry potter girl (laughs) (laughs) and then then one of the other teammates was like oh but i just like looking at edward he's just so pretty like when he's laying in the sun (laughs) oh my god this is like in front of our whole team and they're like lusting after edward cullen and your your new employee too. Yes, he's just like <laughs> cracking up and like not saying anything. So oh, that's funny. Great. I know. Oh, it's really beautiful. <laughs> it's true. I think it was maybe uh, because I brought up the uh, the new Batman trailer, which I'm like really well, weirdly excited about. I did not expect I'm... to be looking forward to it, and I am. I know. Uh, like, um update because like the last time we talked about it on this podcast we were kind of like what robert pattinson why yeah. no i'm so excited i'm i i think it's gonna be great yeah i'm real into it like he looks really good and uh all the casting looks really good and the trailer looked dark and badass and they used one of my favorite maybe my favorite nirvana song in the trailer mm-hmm. yeah it was very emo but like very cool and i'm just so batman <laughs> yeah that's so that is man. batman for sure i was talking to someone about it and they were they were like yeah they're just they're just going like more more that way right the grittiness of batman but wouldn't yeah. it be funny if like we got a, a take of batman that just like veered all the way back to the 1960s version like super <laughs> campy <laughs> like or underwear even, on top of leggings yes or even like the george clooney version oh, which i don't know i mean i know george clooney was like a hunk um yeah. but like <sighs> it just doesn't fit like who why would you think like you know what george clooney he's the perfect batman perfect for batman what (laughs) hear me out (laughs) (laughs) 
he has picture this a George really Clooney. monotone voice <laughs> he smiles a lot so he's perfect for batman it's that ba- <laughs> it's the happiest batman that we get is that one and the, the hunkiest most hollywoody batman oh yeah that's really yeah. funny but anyway <laughs> good good tangent there i just had to uh mention that i was um thinking again today about the new batman and i'm i'm surprisingly very excited yeah we'll keep you guys updated on our excitement <laughs> so it's, really, it's really important uh, okay so back to this episode i guess um mm-hmm. the director is john f showalter and it was written by adam glass who that was a new name for me yeah um new guy yeah, it did pretty good. I mean, you know, just a, I, I always feel like as a writer, it's got to be really hard to just jump into a show and try and uh, write something that's cohesive with what's already happened. Um, yeah, that's especially a big ask. when, you know, like we're talking about, he's taking uh, something that has already been established, like a shapeshifter, and he's having to go back to all the instances of where we've seen shapeshifters when they've been mentioned because yeah you know. there were a lot of references to what we've seen already right yep so it did a pretty good job considering all of that for sure um like it wasn't just a totally new concept that they could do whatever they want with it was actually like some research that needed to be done <laughs> um this episode aired october 1st 2010 and uh, there was some music that was notable. Um, a couple songs that played during the episode. One was Shop Till You Drop by Daniel May. And this one plays when uh, Sam and Dean are shopping for baby supplies. Great scene. <laughs> uh, Dirty Weekend by Jim Blake. And this one plays while Dean and Sam um, realize that a shapeshifter is holding the baby. And uh, then at the end, those are all courtesy of uh, Supernatural Wiki. So thank you for that and the the references of when they played. And then uh, I knew this one on my own. I did not need Supernatural Wiki. (laughs) But the song played at the very end when Dean is unveiling Baby is uh, Smoke on the Water by Deep Purple. Great song. Classic song. I thought it was used really well in that scene it was pretty fucking badass Mm -hmm. and i've got a little bit of uh interesting trivia about the song so let me see this one came out in 1973 on deep purple's album called i'm sorry 1972 uh on their album called machine head which is also the name of a band um And so the lyrics of the song, I won't go through the whole lyrics, but apparently they tell the tale of a true story. Um, In 1971, Deep Purple were playing in Switzerland, um, and it was, let's see, at a Frank Zappa and the Mothers of Invention concert that was uh, at this Montreux Casino. They had a um, a theater there that they were all playing at and somebody, let me see, they fired a flare gun at the ceiling and it caught on fire and everybody evacuated. And so somebody from deep purple was talking about it later and they were like, yeah, it wasn't that big of a deal when it first caught on fire because it just seemed like a little bit of fire and then like some smoke and so everybody just kind of like calmly evacuated and then once they were out the whole fucking thing went up in flames it was like an explosion oh shit yeah everybody got out and then it was like okay i'm gonna i'm gonna burn the fuck down now and it was right on lake geneva and so smoke on the water came to one of the band members in a dream Uh, a few days later because it was about the smoke from the fire spreading over Lake Geneva which is pretty metal yeah 
<laughs> yeah, we could call it that. <laughs> Pretty fucking well. That's what I'm going to go with. <laughs> That's crazy, though. I it's know. probably like some sort of nightmare dream, though. Like, oh, shit. Mm-hmm. When, uh, we almost fucking killed a bunch of people, basically. Yeah. Nearly escaped a fiery death. Ugh. I know it's really crazy. So there's your there's your music trivia for for the day. Um, did you have anything that you wanted to talk about before we get into the episode? Um, no, I don't believe I do. If I find if I think of something, I'll I'll bring it up in mid episode. Okay, I'm fine with that. <laughs> Feel free. Okay, so we do have an episode recap at the beginning. Uh, They go over scenes from Sam coming back from hell um, and then him talking to Dean about how he got out of the life, you know, and and made a a family for himself. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. And then uh, our introduction to the Campbells and... Uh, a recap of what we've seen of shapeshifters so that was really fun we went all the way back to skin and some of the the scenes from that episode that was like way back when that's a good episode man (laughs) it was good i was reminded of that too it's like oh man okay going going back here (laughs) and then scenes of the end of the last episode where Dean decides to stay behind with Lisa and Ben and not go hunting with Sam. So then Mm -hmm. we cut to now. Um, We open on an image of like a mantle with all of these family portraits and pictures on it. And then suddenly this bloody hand comes out of nowhere and crashes onto the mantle and smashes some pictures and then this woman uh, with her like bloody hand grabs up her baby and runs upstairs and hides in the upstairs bedroom. Um, she tries calling 911, but it seems like the lines have been cut. It just is beeping on the other end and she can't get through. So she takes her baby and hides under the bed and she's trying to keep the baby quiet and stay calm. And she looks out under the door and sees footsteps walking past the bedroom. So it seems like they're safe. Then she looks over and sees her husband dead on the ground with his throat slit and blood everywhere and his eyes open. And she's like trying not to scream. And that was really disturbing. Yeah. And then the door to the bedroom does not open, but something grabs her out from under the bed and we just hear screaming and the baby's fine, but like hearing the mom being murdered and then the scene oh. cuts. Yeah, it's it's like scary. It's like I scary was... because it doesn't feel very monstery yet. It just feels intrudery. Yeah, like there's in there's a killer in this house. But... Yeah, there's a crazy man with a knife in my house. Me and my family. Oh my god. I don't um, know. And I was so scared for the baby. I was like, oh no, don't kill the baby. Like yeah. I was thinking about all the therapy that baby was gonna need later in life. Like Aww. as an infant, your parents were both murdered in front of you. No no. Yeah. So then we cut to Dean and he is in the garage fiddling with some stuff in the trunk of the Impala. And uh, he packs it all up and covers up the Impala uh, with some canvas and goes inside the house and Lisa and Ben are unpacking. So it's obvious that they just moved to a new house. And I just wanted to note that I'm so proud of Dean for not leaving Lisa. Like, I just, I just noted like relationships are work, you know, like if you want to be with somebody, like you need to talk about it and work it out Mm-hmm. And he cares enough about them and her to to stick around and protect them and try to figure out what to do. Yeah, totally. He could have gone a completely different way and been like, oops, 
uh, I gotta go. You know, my brother is back. I need to be with him now <laughs> since he's, he's my partner in life and all of that. No, he, he truly loves Lisa and he sees the importance of staying with, I mean, he loves this life. It's just, it's so funny. Like it's such a big difference from season two, Dean. Um, God, and that's another thing that they really missed the mark on, you know, the last time we saw a Jin was back in what is and what should never be when (gasps) Dean is made to believe. Oh, you're so right uh that he's like in this living a normal life or whatever and and he's like the one going crazy and it's like they could have really made a lot of connections there yeah you really missed out on some some good references you have been great dang you're totally right but yeah i mean whatever as usual nobody asked us (laughs) right (laughs) Look, if you would like to hire some freelance uh, show consultants, we're happy to be your fans and tell you what you did wrong before it happens. Yeah. Okay. So we're we're ready for hire. Um. <laughs> so yeah, Dean comes back in. They're all unpacking, and Ben's kind of like pouty. He's really not enjoying this, and so he tries to go for a bike ride, and Dean stops him. Uh, It seems like he's kind of scared for him. And so he kind of smooths over, glosses over the the sticky moment uh, by asking Ben to help him unpack and distracting him. And so then we cut to Sam and he is in full investigator suit and playing his role um, outside of a house that has caution tape all around it and police cars. And he finds out from another investigator that uh, the baby is missing and they think that it may not be alive now. And then we just see Sam like going into the house. Yeah. Dark. It is real dark. So then we cut back to Dean and he's getting a pizza delivered and he turns around with the pizza and Lisa and Ben are both standing there staring at him. And she's like, I thought we were going out. He's like, like really honestly, like he, he played this well. He was just like, oh, I'm sorry. I forgot. <laughs> and she's just like, yeah, okay, I'll get some plates. And uh, we just get the feeling that Dean's trying really hard not to let them out of the house <laughs> at this point. Right. He's really trying hard to protect them, um, including up and uh, like upending their entire life and moving them. We don't really know how far away they moved, but like, I mean, moving, you're, you're about to move. I am. Um, mm-hmm. That's, it's tiring, man. It's moving is really tiring. It's a really big deal. Um, totally. It's a big commitment. Yeah. And like, I think Lisa says something like, you know, uh, maybe later on about like, you know, you, you you know made us move and um I don't know like she's not upset about it but obviously she's kind of like a little bit nervous right because obviously it means that he's worried and if he's worried then maybe right. there's something to be worried about um and he's but, not talking to her about it that's the only thing that kind of upset me is like he's just kind of like relying on her trust right like, let me handle this. Yeah, Don't but worry. of course, I've got this. She's a, clearly a smart girl. She's not stupid. And so she can tell that something's up. And she is being very trustworthy because she loves him and just kind of letting it go. But of course, there would be a point, Dean, where you got to, like, you got to come clean. And it's a, it's a partnership. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's the smarter thing anyway, because what if it is a shapeshifter you know like does she know how to check for that sort of thing totally knowledge is power yeah so i don't i don't know that they've had that talk i don't i don't think we've seen that yet um if he's no. like he does teach her how to reference. shoot a gun or teach her about a gun later there's that yeah but yeah we need to have some some education 
Mm-hmm. Um, so then we cut back to Sam and he has looked through the house and he's back outside and is talking to Samuel on the phone. And he says, okay, so now that's four babies that are missing. And Sam's kind of like off in La La Land, like thinking to himself and Samuel's like talking to him. And then he's like, Hey, are you like there? And Sam's like, Oh, what? And Samuel's like, sometimes I wonder about you. And Sam goes, sometimes I wonder about me too. And I just noted that because it was such a weird exchange. Like, what does that even mean? Yeah. Like what, what, why would Sam wonder about himself? Isn't he kind of like a badass hunter now? He like escaped hell and he's like doing his own thing with the Campbells. Like, is there some weirdness between them or, you know, like it just felt weird. I don't know. I guess I kind of took it as like Sam is going through something or he, um, you know, he, he did escape hell. So maybe there is something kind of going on with him that we're not seeing yet mm-hmm. and that he's dealing with. But the episode itself, like the writing and the directing of it doesn't really indicate any of that. So I don't know. It just stood it's out odd. to me as a strange conversation. Um, it is odd. I just put a question mark <laughs> in my notes. <laughs> yeah, cool. lots of question marks on that. Mm-hmm. So then Sam asks Samuel to check out Harper Kane security. It's the security sign in the front yard of this house. Um, because he found out that the alarm never went off. So just to check into that strangeness. Mm. Mm-hmm. So we cut back to Dean and he, this is a scary moment for me, walks into the garage and walks in on Ben checking out his sawed off shotgun in the back of the Impala. No, 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 no. Like I do not. I, this was so tough because this whole scene, like you can tell, you know, Dean's like freaked out and feels bad about taking it out on Ben, but I would totally freak out. Yeah. 100%. 100 percent if i saw my kid with a gun i i would flip (laughs) apologize later but they need to know that that's a big deal yeah i I mean i did kind of like get really nervous because dean was very aggressive with with ben at this point but i think i think he meant it obviously he meant well right and he meant it from like a dad standpoint but it was like a little above dad aggressiveness standards it was yeah i think he knew that he was kind of crossing a line yeah because he apologized like right afterwards Mm -hmm. and you could see his face too it was like i i I just totally sympathized because i think i would have had a very similar reaction and flipped the fuck out on them and then been like oh i shouldn't have done that yeah i mean because i don't really like because he says something like shut up about the gun or something like that and it's like yes Whoa. that is exactly what he says Ugh. he just loses his temper and so ben doesn't really get it he's like you had a gun when you were my age and you know he doesn't understand so that's also interesting because it tells me that dean has talked to ben about what he does about mm. hunting and stuff I guess. And how he grew up. Yeah, that's true. So he's just been real honest with Lisa and Ben, but that's kind of like, that's also kind of cool because it's still, it's like them against the world, you know? Yeah. Um, But yeah, poor Ben. He's just, and then he takes it real well. Like he doesn't, you know, cry or get upset or anything. He's just like, okay, sorry, you know, and leaves. But, um, you know, you can tell that, it's, it's not good between them. So Samuel uh, talks to Sam and finds out that every other house that got hit had that same security company and that there is a family still living that has that security company too and they have a baby, a new baby. And Sam's like, where's the address? And just takes off. Um. Mm. 
back with Dean. He's in the garage kind of fiddling away with stuff. And Lisa comes in and talks to him and says that, um, you know, what's going on? Ben's been locked in his room for hours and neither of you are talking. And so Dean just says that Ben got into his tools and he shouldn't have gotten mad. So he doesn't really tell her everything, but I think he, I don't know, maybe he's embarrassed. Um, and she's so awesome. I just, I love Lisa. She's just the shit. <laughs> she's super awesome and totally understands. And she's like trying to talk to Dean to get more information from him because of what we were talking about. Like they've uprooted their lives and they're in this new house and, um, you know, doing all these things because Dean has told them that's what they need to do, but they don't really understand why. She's just trusting him. And she's like, you know, we, we got to f- talk about this because we still have to live our lives. Like, what's what's the cutoff point here? You know, like, what what are what am I working with? Yeah. Which is totally valid. And he, and he doesn't really give an answer. He's just like. Oh, no. Like, something might happen. That's all. And, and really, that's that's kind of what he's working with also in a sense right he doesn't really know what's gonna come after them if if anything he's Mm -hmm. just worried that something will happen Mm -hmm. and i'm guessing it's because of like the talk between him and samuel um where samuel was like yeah there's been like really weird shit happening and we're seeing things that we've never seen before um yeah maybe so maybe that's part of it but mm-hmm. it, it is really interesting that he's barely feeling like this, um, you know, because he, he seemed to have been always very cautious and all that uh, throughout the year. But right after Sam gets back, it's like, oh, okay, the, the, the monsters, in a sense, have been led back to him and he does need to take additional precautions. It's not going to be the same that it was right. before mm-hmm. yeah I think that's maybe why he's feeling that way too um, so Sam goes to the address of the family that's still living and it's nighttime by this time and he just lets himself into the house which I thought was pretty bold but I guess he kind of knew what was going on because um, he breaks into the house, no alarm goes off, and he looks into the living room and finds a couple dead with their throats slit. And so he starts to slowly make his way through the house, and then suddenly he's attacked by this huge guy in a security guard outfit. Um, So they fight, and Sam pulls out a silver blade and cuts him on the arm, and the cut burns. Hmm. And suddenly the guy just runs away. So Sam keeps looking through the house and looks over at this table with a tablecloth over it. And you can't see underneath it. And he hears this noise. And so he like slowly makes his way over to the table and lifts up the tablecloth and like makes this shocked face. (laughs) And so we cut to him calling Dean and begging for his help. Even though Dean doesn't want to help, he's just like, please, I gotta, I, there's nobody else I can turn to, like, you gotta, you gotta help me out with this. <laughs> and we're like, what? What is happening? What did you think about that? Did you, did you think that, like, Sam would not be able to handle, handle a baby? A baby? <laughs> I don't know why he thought he needed Dean. Yeah, that's so strange to me. Uh-huh. Like, you know, I mean, Dean's always been the one we've talked about this many times. He's always been the one that like really connects to kids and not just <laughs> Ben, but like Todd and like all of these other kids True. that we've seen. And Sam, not really, you know, I think kids have like hated him. I think or <laughs> just not really cared about him at all. Um. But, you know, but also Sam is very nurturing and 
um I don't know it just it's very strange to me that like he would instantly be well one be like I don't know what to do with this and then two obviously I need to go to Dean of all people right um but maybe you're right like maybe he knows that Dean is good with kids you know and has seen that and that's why he thought he needed him I guess I would have liked him to have like the reaction like well let me just go to Lisa you know I think that would have made a little bit more sense perhaps for Sam Um, to to think that right like like let me me go to Lisa like another like a mom help Right, because she she would definitely know what to do with the baby. Um, But it is also very interesting that he didn't, I don't think that he felt safe enough or trusted himself. Yeah, trusted Samuel and and the group. Mm -hmm. That's true. That's, that's, maybe that's our biggest tip off about like any weirdness between Sam and Samuel or the Campbells is that it doesn't really seem like he fully trusts them, even though he acts like he does to Dean. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Is Sam playing a game? I don't know. Samuel's definitely playing a game. Maybe Sam mm-hmm. is also. Yeah, maybe he's caught on to that and he's like, you know. Not here for it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. Let me see. Okay, so he he convinces Dean to meet up with him and help him out. Uh, They meet up, and Dean goes to see him in his truck. He doesn't take the Impala. (laughs) And then he asks Sam, where is it? And he goes to the backseat and and looks in, and it's a baby. (laughs) And Dean's like, oh, my my God. (laughs) And of course, he I I think at this point makes a reference to like Go- Stephen Gutenberg, uh, who's like in Three Men and a Baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he totally did. Um, and it's a pretty cute baby, by the way. This is a very the babies they had yes. in this episode. Both of them were so cute. Yes, yeah, so adorable. Oh my god. <laughs> so it was like. <laughs> a really uh great source of like comedic relief just to yeah this cute little baby hanging out and having these guys well we'll, we'll get to it but having them you know try and manage a baby yeah really it's like mr it. mom They're yeah just so hopeless but not <sighs> dean knows what's up yeah he's he knows he knows what's up i love it <laughs> <laughs> Makes me want to make a dad out of him. Oh, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I think I know what you mean. <laughs> Such a daddy. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> I think I shocked you with that one. It's so true, though. Okay, so then Dean's getting ready to go with Sam. Uh, he's back at his house and he's showing Lisa how to load a gun. This is, this is part of uh, this education, I guess. So he's mm-hmm. like, for real, in, in it with Sam, he's like, okay, I'll help you. And so um, preparing Lisa to be without him at home. And he's really reluctant. Uh, he has her, like, show him how to take the safety off and, you know, load it and cock it and all of that. Uh, and he's like, okay, are you, are you sure? I, you know, I don't have to go. And she's like, if you don't go, I'm going to shoot you. <laughs> and smiles. <laughs> it's so cute. Oh, I love her. I love her. She's so great. <laughs> and, um, and he says, like, I guess you're missing your ex right about now. And she's just like, you're so stupid. <laughs> and I, why haven't they kissed? There hasn't been any kissing or making out. There's like no, no physical stuff happening in these two episodes. And I'm, not very happy about it that's true we're so used to dean like seeing him get it on with a bunch of girls and and this and that and we haven't seen that at all with him and lisa no No. 
And they're like actually in love. Yeah, they're super in love and they're, you know, together. They're both uh, consenting adults and <laughs> this and that. Right. But uh, yeah, that's strange. I wonder if it's just like they're trying to separate. I don't know. They're just trying to enhance their romantic relationship or like the way they I work guess the people who are like together kiss you know like well, <laughs> yeah of course, of course like why why leave that out it's so weird it's like a natural <laughs> thing <laughs> <laughs> yeah I just keep missing it weird. like they have these really great scenes where I feel like they're connecting and then I'm like kiss 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 and then it just cuts and I'm like what the fuck <laughs> Well, it's funny because even as I was saying that, though, I I don't even think that they're playing up like the romance between them. It's really just like here's mom and dad, here's here's <laughs> mom Lisa and dad Dean, and that's it. They might you know? as well just call each other mom and dad, and you know, yeah, just sleep in twin die. beds and yeah, <laughs> right, <laughs> exactly. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. Stupid. Anyway, I'm I'm holding out hope for some making out soon. They they need some, <laughs> they need to make up for this. So Dean takes off and uh let me see where I was. Oh yeah, and <laughs> he's in Sam's car and he looks in the back seat and uh tells the baby to speak up if he knows anything. And then the baby gives, like, the cutest smile ever. It's super cute. <laughs> um, let me see. And I think they so, say the babies are six months old. All of them. Okay, yeah. Which I thought was interesting. That I is know, interesting. Just because. Just once they turn six months, that's when they're ripe <laughs> or something. Yeah, I guess so. Um and it's funny because, like, I don't know, again, like, there should have been more connections, I think, with, like, Sam, the whole, like, special children thing. I, would, I don't know. I, I, maybe that I was waiting for that, too. For that. Really? Yeah. Because, like, a baby being, like, retrieved or messed with or something, that just seems like an obvious connection. Right. And, like, at a specific time, you know, time frame. Uh-huh. With it. I don't know. No, I'm with you. Dang it. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so, uh, then they, Dean's like on it. He's like, okay, we're going to need some supplies. So they go to the grocery store and go baby supply shopping. And I just, I loved the scene. It was so funny. Um, it was like the like, best scene for sure it's, it's the best they're like trying to figure out what to get it and Dean's like no yeah what's that stuff you put on their butt <laughs> gotta gotta get some of that um, yeah and he held it up and it's the exact same stuff that I use for my baby it's, <laughs> it, it does in fact work wonders because he's like yeah I know all about this stuff you, you gotta get this you know and it's like yeah you gotta get that <laughs> you're so right <laughs> I love oh that. My God. Um, and then, then Dean's like, he can tell that the baby's about to start crying. He's like, we got like T minus ten minutes, and so then suddenly the baby just starts crying and crying and crying, and and it's such oh a classic predicament. Like I feel like every single parent goes through this. There's no way they don't. You are out in public and your baby starts crying very loudly and nothing you do makes any difference. You cannot make them be quiet. And yeah, I think this, I think people have maybe gotten a bit better about this. Like I think for the most part, they're pretty understanding because they know that there's literally nothing you can do about a crying baby. Like, mm -hmm. you know, they're just going to be nice about it. But, but this does happen. Everybody in the grocery store turns and looks at them like they've just like beaten their child or something. They're just the worst <laughs> parent. Right, because they don't know how to calm down the baby. Yes. For sure. I know. Aww. And they're like, oh my God, everyone's staring. <laughs> and so then this really sweet woman comes up in line behind them as they're trying to check out. She starts talking to the baby and you know, they're like, I don't know what, what's wrong. And so she takes him and holds him and 
She's like, oh, well, you need a diaper change. You know, I don't mind doing it. And Dean is like about to take her up on it. But then he looks over and sees the security camera on this lady. And she's got those glowing eyes that the shapeshifters have on camera. Yeah. Good He's catch, like, oh, sh- Dean. Yeah. Uh, I mean, pretty convenient that they have the security camera right there for everybody to see. But, you know, <laughs> right. we'll go with it. So that's some shit. And he's like, oh, no, that's okay. We're good. Thanks. I'll take him back. And and Sam's like, what? No, it's, you know, just let her do it. And then he, like, nudges him and looks over at the camera. And Sam's like, oh, no, yeah, th- never mind. So <laughs> I forget what he said to her. Something like, put the baby down or I'll punch you in the face or something like that. Or <laughs> shoot you in the head. Like, really, something really violent. Yeah, I think he said something like, Give me the baby before I stab you in your neck. <laughs> but I think it's Jesus. actually before Sam realizes that it's a shapeshifter. Yeah, and so he's like, Sam's just Dean, like, what the fuck? Yeah. Why are you talking to this lady like that? <laughs> yeah, because she seems like a sweet old lady. And yeah, no. So funny. <laughs> um. So then suddenly she just goes running off with the baby. And Dean goes running after her. He's, like, not messing around. And then he grabs her on the arm and peels skin off. Oh. And this was so So crazy. It's so disgusting. And it comes off in front of everybody in the store. And, like, people are watching and they're like, ugh. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Like, what did they think, you know? I don't know. What regular, I don't know, situation would that happen in oh I, I don't know like how, how do you explain that away yeah so gross um and so then they get the baby back and run out of the store and the shapeshifter runs out after them as they're driving away and looks at their license plate and memorizes the number great and the next thing we see is the shapeshifter has shed uh and gotten into a cop suit and it's it's a pretty cool scene because it's this cop sitting in the cop car calling in the license plate number. And then the camera pans over to the police officer partner who's dead with their throat slit. And then mm-hmm. out of the car and down onto the ground where the old lady's skin is laying. Yeah. I like that little detail, you know. Mm-hmm. We didn't have to, like, see them actually. It probably saved them a lot of money you know, thinking about it, like, they didn't have to show this transformation. It's just like, okay, yeah, we know that this per- this shapeshifter has shed the skin and is now the police officer. And it's very, it's very cool. It's very like Terminator, you know, like, yes, morph into these, um, or Terminator 2, seeing them morph into these multiple um, human beings and very cool. I, I really... I really love the shapeshifters, man. We need more of this. <laughs> it's a very cool concept, for sure. And and they did a good job of, uh, like, what is it, you know, showing the story and not telling. Yeah, yeah, exactly. This is a good example of that. Mm-hmm. It was, it was pretty cool. Some good directing there. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> so then my notes just say, oh, my God, Dean and Babies is so great. Yeah. Well, and you know what I was going to mention is uh, back in the grocery store when the baby is crying and crying and he can't get it to stop crying. Mm-hmm. And then he like, he like yells at the baby or he like starts crying oh, yeah. also <sighs> to mimic it. But it's funny because you're okay. Like they say, if you, if the baby has colic and just won't stop crying, that that is a way to help the baby stopped crying like that's a real method i actually that's wondered a real method. about that <laughs> yeah because the baby's supposed to like see that and be like what the hell just happened and and like it oh, kind of snaps them crying? out of it exactly <sighs> he's just such a natural born dad <laughs> natural born dad daddy <laughs> Uh, Daddy Dean. <laughs> Hashtag Daddy Dean. Okay, let's get that. Hashtag natural born dad. <laughs> so good. Uh, 
<laughs> oh man. Well, he and Sam are shocker in a motel room with the baby. And he's talking to Sam about how Ben is starting to feel like his kid. And he feels like he has the opportunity to do something different with Ben than what they had. Oh, and this is really interesting because Sam starts talking to him about it. And I feel like this is the first really like in-depth, like heart-to-heart conversation they've had since being reunited. And, um, and Sam gets real with him and tells him some things that he probably doesn't want to hear, but they're really good points. So he starts talking to Dean about how, you know, like, even though you want to do something different, you're still subjecting Ben to this life, even though you don't mean to, um, you know, you've, you've picked them up and moved them. You keep saying that this is temporary, just like dad used to. You know, how does, Mm -hmm. how how do you live with them and, and do this and keep from turning into our dad? Yeah, that's totally true. And, you know, Dean, I don't know, even though Dean got upset at Ben holding onto that gun, um, because like he had this opposing view than his dad had, you know, like of giving them guns and teaching them and all that. It still comes, I think, from the same place, like protectiveness and like that anger that protectiveness can have. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't know, maybe maybe at the, it's at this point that he kind of like realizes what exactly happened. Right. And like, oh, you're right. I'm, I am doing that anyway. Yeah. That's a good point, though. I think it's probably in talking to Sam that he he realizes, you know, what really drove him and, and what happened in that conversation with Ben. Mm-hmm. Um, then Sam leaves the motel room to uh, go and talk to uh, a man who had been married to one of the women who was killed. Um, There's apparently, of all the couples that were murdered, um, one of the victim's ex-husbands, like, survived. And so he has someone who he can go and talk to about this woman and and try and dig into what's happening here. And uh, and they also, by this point, are like, well, what are we going to call it? Oh, I think it was when they were in the grocery store. Um, she's like, what's his name? And, and I think Dean says John and Sam says Bobby. <laughs> They're like, Bobby and John. Bob, Bobby John. <laughs> yeah, totally normal name. Yeah, good old Bobby John. <laughs> so after Sam leaves, the baby won't stop crying and... Dean goes to his whiskey glass and sticks his finger in the whiskey and sticks it in the baby's mouth. Oh, no. I can't believe they used to do that shit. I know. Yeah, that's (laughs) such a, like, I don't know. Now it's, like, such an old wives' tale kind of thing. Yeah. But it was so funny, though, because, like, the baby is, like, crying and crying one second, and then Dean's, like... (laughs) Oh, sh- sh- you know he d- he does something like miraculous, and then like puts or is that later? But he puts the baby down, and then the baby's like, we get a shot of the baby just perfectly asleep, and I'm like, yeah, okay, okay, <laughs> that's really how it works. Yeah, I think it was before then, and Sam was like, wow, you've really got like a, a knack for this, <laughs> like. <laughs> We were supposed to record like an hour before and it's because uh, I, it took me like 40 minutes to put down the baby. Like, no. (laughs) Not reality. Not that easy. Yeah. (laughs) He just has this gift. It's a gift. Yeah. I need to get that daddy Dean over here. (laughs) God damn it. (laughs) Uh, okay so sam goes to talk to this survivor and he's a mechanic in his like mechanic onesie in his garage 
and he's talking to Sam and tells Sam that he and his wife were getting a divorce because she cheated on him. She got Mm -hmm. pregnant and told him that they had sex, but he's like, no, we didn't. We haven't had sex in months. And she's like, no, yeah, remember you went on that work trip and then came home early and we did it. And he's like, what? And so we're immediately like, dun, dun, dun. Yeah, like, uh-oh, that's kind of weird. And also awkward. kind of fucked up. Poor girl, because she's like been taken advantage of by a shapeshifter and totally thought it was her husband. And now her husband's like, you cheated on me and I want a divorce. Yeah, yeah, no, it's it's not very... It's real not fucked up. <laughs> no. uh uh-huh. Completely. But uh, anyway, that, that solves that uh, mystery. Uh, and I guess that's what's, you know, we just assume that's what's been happening with all of these others. Um, but then what does that mean about the babies? So back with Dean in the motel room, <laughs> he's laying on the bed and looks over at his, his old friend, the relaxation service box uh, connected to the bed. And he, like, looks at it and then decides against it. It's like, no, that's the old Dean. Um, (laughs) And then suddenly there's, like, this splat sound. And he looks over and it's, like, in the where the baby's crib is above it, there's, like, the splatter of goo and shit up on the wall. And... Then he goes over to the baby and we see a box of diapers that they got at the store that's next to the crib and the baby model on on the box is this little black baby and suddenly the baby in the crib is black. By the way, it was (laughs) white before. (laughs) Yeah. Oh my God. I love this moment. It's so... It's so just funny, hilarious, and it's like, I love, like, the reveal of it being a shapeshifter baby by, like, the splat, like, the splatter (laughs) on the walls, and so gross, but also, like, yeah, you just peer into it and then see that that box, and it's like, oh, so the baby was able to see this and make that connection. (laughs) Yeah, modeled itself after this little black baby. Yeah. And we so have to crazy. think, like, this is the first time the baby has done this, right? Because, like, if, oh, my God, if my baby did that, all of a sudden, <laughs> like, I just look in and the baby's, like, a completely different baby, I would have been, like, what? Where's like, my baby? Yeah, right. But, yeah, we don't get any sort of indication that, like, this has happened before and the mom has freaked out. Right. I think Dean just has really good timing. <laughs> Uh, so he's like trying to figure out what the hell's happening and the shapeshifter comes to the motel room and tries to get in by saying, um, you know, that they're going to change the sheets and he's like, it's not a good time. And then suddenly they're like trying to break in and he's like, oh shit. And so it ends up breaking into the motel room and the shapeshifter and Dean have this like standoff. And the shapeshifter says that the baby should be with our father. And I was like, what's with all this our father shit? Like, this is the second episode where a monster shows up and is talking about our father. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I think that we're supposed to believe that they're doing all of this for, like, the alpha, right? Like, the alpha um, shapeshifter. Right. And with the djinn, I'm, I don't recall if it was supposed to be like an alpha figure also, or just like their father, but you're right where it's like, I don't know. It's like, it's too close. It's like, we just did this. Yeah. We, you know, we just learned about the father and the alpha uh, for the djinn. Why are we retreading this material again? You know, I like the shapeshifter stuff. Cool. Mm -hmm. um but it i don't we don't need this well i i wouldn't mind it like i don't know where it's going if it's intentional then okay you know like if it all actually leads back to like 
one big baddie that's doing this across monster species or something like that. You know, if mm-hmm. it like leads into a bigger thing, then then cool, I guess. But uh and I don't really know, you know, like you said, we're supposed to believe that this is about an alpha, but that's coming from Samuel, and I don't I don't trust Samuel. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I don't, I um, don't trust him, so I don't know what to think. I think I still need to see a little bit more if that if that's what's happening here. I, I um, same. Like if we go into a third episode where another different type of monster shows up and talks about our father, I'm gonna be like, okay, <laughs> <This isn't laughs> there's a pattern here. Anymore. Yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, totally. Um, but I mean, I think, I think for me at least, this worked a little bit better than the gin. I still didn't like it. I still didn't like needing this alpha shape shifter. I, mm-hmm. You know, I um, I don't know. I don't. I don't think we need it. Like, it's, it, you know, if it's not part of some bigger plan, I I feel like I agree. It's, I thought it was kind of interesting. Are just cool enough. Yeah. Yeah, I thought it was interesting, and I actually didn't hate it, but I, I'm with you in that I, I need it to uh, be part of something bigger. Like, I really hope that's not just the end of it, you know, because that's kind of silly. I don't know. Um, oh, and also I had another thought about that that I, I just lost. Um, oh, well, just that, you know, with the start of this season and the two episodes we've seen so far, It makes me already miss Lucifer. Like, I wish that Mm. this had been, I, I'm going to go ahead and guess that this isn't where it goes, but I wish it would go this direction, which is that next episode, there would be another species talking about our father or something else. And then we find out that our father is actually Lucifer and just kidding. He's, he's back in this other way or something like that. You know, he just seems like the ultimate, um, like what what's the word I'm looking for like like uh I don't know the ultimate bad guy for Sam and Mm -hmm. Dean Mm -hmm. and if he's done now that's lame yeah well and it's funny because I and I didn't um I didn't speak to this last episode but um well I spoke a little bit about it right I spoke I mentioned how Sarah Gamble um stated that season six was supposed to be like this return to form uh, as far as like the monster of the week episode format and and the brother's relationship and that's what it's going to focus on i actually picked up um a nicholas knight's season six an official guide Ooh. um and i uh, uh it's on like my bed nightstand right now it's not right in front of me unfortunately that's okay um but i might say this like i I don't want to speak to it too much in case it's a little bit spoilery but sarah does talk a little bit about season six and about how they wanted to kind of um how basically how they wanted to go from season five like because season five Lucifer is like the biggest bad that you could ever have. So how do you top that? Right. And so she says a little bit more in that, that I I'll speak to, I think later on, but one of the things that she does say is like, yeah, that's the, that's the main reason why they decided to go to this monster of the week episode format, because it's like, yeah, well, how do you top Lucifer? We can't fucking do that. So let's do something totally different. Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of what I figured, which is why I wish that they had just made Lucifer, like, the ongoing bad guy. Mm -hmm. Like, even after season five, it seems like it's all done, but can't he creep back in? He's fucking Lucifer. Right. He can break out of the cage. No cage can hold him. Exactly. 
or he has his ways. Can't he like reach others from the cage or, you know, stir some shit up or still be their, sure. their nemesis. That's the word I was looking for. He's like their ultimate, like counter, you know, counterpart, like their nemesis. And so yeah. um, I guess it just would have been, I would have been fine with that. You know, even after like, the beautiful way that season five wrapped up and it felt in a lot of ways, very final. Um, I, I would have been happy to recognize that they couldn't top that and it was really awesome. And so they needed to bring him back somehow <laughs> and just keep it being a thing, you know? Right. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Mm-hmm. I, I miss my, I miss me some Lucifer as well. He was yeah, awesome. Me too. And that actor, Mark, what's his face? Love him. Yeah. Oh, what did we just watch recently that he was in that was so (laughs) surprised? He's in the fucking Big Lebowski. Oh, really? Yeah. He's one of the assholes who breaks into Lebowski's house at the very beginning and shoves his head in the toilet. Oh, like the, like, just kind of a thuggish character. Yeah. That's so funny. While the other guy pees on his rug. Oh. It's like, not the rug, man. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then he tells him, he like shoves his head in the toilet. And uh, he's like, you want some more Lebowski? You know, do you, do you see it? He's like, where's the money? And he's like, I don't know. Why don't you put me back in there? And I can, I can look a little more. <laughs> That's so funny. But uh, anyway, he's like a baby in that. He seems really young. Yeah. So, okay, so Sam, uh, well, Dean and the shapeshifter start fighting after this sort of standoff. Um, The shapeshifter tries to get the baby, and Dean's like, hell no. And Sam shows up right at at the perfect time and shoots the shapeshifter and saves Dean and the baby. So Sam and Dean are really confused because they didn't even know that shapeshifters had babies. (laughs) We're all, this, this is news to us. Yeah. And Sam wants to take the baby to Samuel, but Dean doesn't. Uh, I'm team Dean right now, as as usual, but he's, like, really not trustworthy of Samuel and the Campbells. But uh, Sam talks him into it, and so they go to the Campbells' like, compound. And, um... Yeah, where are we here? I don't know. It, I had just assumed that we were in the same space as last time, but... It feels like that, but we didn't get to see the outside last time, so maybe it is, and they just are kind of giving us some more context, but, but I still don't know where it is. Yeah. I'm not sure either. And what city? Right. Like, how far are we from everything? Yeah. Where are we right now? Totally. But yeah, they show up and it's like, you know, uh, barbed wire uh, all around this like complex. And there's like people with guns standing outside to check and make sure they know who's coming in and shit like that. Um, And I don't know who those people are. I don't think they were the Campbells. Maybe they were. I wasn't looking too closely. It was dark. Hmm. So they go to see Samuel. (laughs) <laughs> I wrote down in my notes that the Campbells still suck. Samuel <laughs> suggests that they raise the baby. And then when it gets old enough, it can decide what it wants to do. And on the surface, I don't hate this plan. It kind of makes sense. What else are you going to do with it? You're not going to kill it. You're not going to turn it over to the shapeshifters. Uh, you know, what are you, you going to do? So really like taking care of this baby and and raising it and then kind of seeing what happens. Um, I think that's, yeah, that kind of makes sense. I agree. I, I totally think that would be a, a good, uh, solution, right? I mean, of course, I don't think that they should kill the baby and as good as any, I guess. Yeah. And I think, it could potentially be a nature nurture situation like where the baby could be a force of good. It's not, you know, uh, mm-hmm. not necessarily evil because it's a shapeshifter. We haven't had any sort of indication of that. Um, right. Could be like a superpower. <laughs> right. 
<laughs> but at the same time, I don't trust Samuel. And right. I, even when he's saying it, I, he's not saying it with a lot of, well, and especially like later the, on. Well, yeah, for sure. And also uh, the person who he gives the baby to, like it just all happens very fast. He's like, oh no, we're going to do this. And uh, I'm going to hand this baby over to, what the fuck is his name? Uh, Christian. He's like, hey, you and your wife are trying to have a baby, right? And he's like, yeah. And he's like, well, here you go. And just like hands him over. And it's just like, like nothing. It's just done. This guy's like, okay, thanks. Right. But it's a baby. You know, it's like, right. It's You're not just handing over. I don't know. No, exactly. Lizard. Which is why it made but... me feel like they weren't really going to adhere to that yeah yeah also christian is married and has a wife (laughs) i I guess i don't fucking know where is she like what is this life i don't know i don't know i i have a lot of questions Mm -hmm. so this whole uh agreement goes down this scenario and Dean's like pissed at first he doesn't even want to hand the baby over I don't blame him and Sam talks him into it and so and Sam's the go-between so Dean gives Sam the baby and Sam gives the baby to Samuel Mm -hmm. which was interesting and then Samuel's like hey Christian here's this baby and Dean's like what the fuck are you talking about and so as they're like getting kind of heated about it a shapeshifter walks in the room that looks exactly like Samuel. And they're like, oh, shit. Crazy. Yeah, great. So the shapeshifter says that they want the baby. Uh, They all start shooting the shapeshifter, but it does nothing. (laughs) And then I wrote, Mark, question mark? I don't, I don't, this other dude who's one of the camels? Uh, attacks the shapeshifter and the shapeshifter just like snaps his neck. Yeah, Mark's is dead instantly. Uh, by Mark, question mark. Which was really dumb because I don't, uh, I'm forgetting like the situation, the specific situation, but I don't think that he needed to die. No, he didn't need to attack the shapeshifter like that. It was real dumb. Yeah, I think they were fine. I think they were completely fine. <laughs> and he just, he didn't do anything. He didn't help or anything by like giving himself up. It was so dumb. Yeah, it was real dumb. It was pointless. <laughs> yeah. I wrote in my notes, oh well, oh, well. exclamation point. <laughs> Darn. Uh, so then they shoot the shapeshifter with four darts, and we understand it's got some kind of, like, poison or something in it that's supposed to, like, knock him out. And they shoot him with four of them, and he slowly starts to go down. And so they're watching him and trying to see what happens. But then, slowly, the shapeshifter stands up and shoots the darts, like, out of his back. I... I don't know. Maybe he like contracted his back muscles and they're like. Yeah. (laughs) So it was a weird effect. Yeah. And it's also like, okay, like we get it. It's an alpha shapeshifter, but like, let's run down all the things that this dude can do. It's like Mm -hmm. they can shapeshift. Right. But they also, they have superhuman strength and then they can contract things so that needles fly out of their back. Like and they're what? like healing, like they can't get hurt easily. Yeah. It's a lot. <laughs> it is a lot. It's just really random. You know, it's, it's, I don't know. It doesn't really work for me. Yeah, that's fair. I think the, they lost me with the darts. That was kind of silly. Like, did they have to shoot out of his back? Like, I think it would have been fine if he hadn't been as affected by them and like pulled them out. Sure. Yeah. But, you know, ejecting them from your body is is strange. So then Dean, like while this is happening, Dean runs out and with the baby and they go down to the cellar and he is down there with Sam. 
and Sam is about to leave uh, Dean and the baby to go help, but then another Sam shows up at the door. So Uh the alpha has made his way to the cellar and he's super strong. He just rips off the metal door and gets past Sam like nothing. Mm -hmm. And then he backs Dean up against a wall and looks at him and just changes into him. There's no skin shedding. Right. So that's another thing that the alpha can do Mm -hmm. that the regular uh, shapeshifters can't. They can just completely shift into someone else without the need to actually. Um, they're they're a lot more metaphysical, I guess, in that sense. They're yeah. not really. I don't know. Like they're they're a little bit more magical. I think. Yeah, yeah. Dean is very confused. Like this happens right in front of his eyes, and he's like, "What the fuck." Yeah. So then as Dean, the shapeshifter, chokes Dean out, like really chokes him until he collapses and takes the baby and leaves. So after this whole episode, the shapeshifter has left with the baby and left all of this like destruction in its wake. Everyone is upstairs recovering. And Samuel's saying, well, it's no longer a myth and that they think this one was the alpha. And Dean's like, what are you talking about? And he's like, well, like the original one where this, this species came from, like the first one of them all. And Samuel says he doesn't know if they can kill it, which is very interesting. Mm -hmm. Like when does a hunter ever take that stance? Yeah, and it makes it seem as if they've heard of the alpha before, that this is part of the lore that they've... Exactly. um, So how does Sam and Dean not know about this, but Samuel knows? I don't know. I guess he's he's just acting like he's got all this knowledge on them about it. Right. And it just, I don't know. It just doesn't work. It doesn't work for me, like... I it just makes me think of like other other shows where we've kind of seen this happen and even in those shows like this whole concept of an alpha does not really jive for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know. We're going to have to see where it goes, but if this is it, I don't know. Right. So then Sam and Dean go outside. Um, Sam's going to take Dean home. And Dean asks Sam if he heard the other shapeshifter in the motel say that thing about our father. Because it was like right as Sam showed up. Mm -hmm. Because if he did, that would mean that Sam knew there was an alpha and that it would find them. And he used the baby as bait. I thought that was pretty bold. Dean's not fucking around, and he doesn't even totally trust Sam. Yeah, no, he doesn't at all. And um, he's basically like, well, he's not coming out and saying it, but he's kind of, you know, he's testing it. He's testing him for sure. Yeah, for sure. Uh, And Sam's like, no, of course not. You know, I just thought this was the safest place. But I don't know if I totally trust Sam. Yeah, likely story. Yeah. Like, yeah, right. I don't... Because the way he acts, too, is totally like, oh, no, of course not. (laughs) (laughs) I trust Sam. Samuel. But, (laughs) um... I just thought this was the safest place. That's... But it was kind of weird to me, though, because in, in the beginning of the episode, as mentioned before, I felt like he didn't trust Samuel. And he was going to Dean... Because he trusted Dean over Samuel and, and didn't want to endanger or um, or he kind of like knew what was what would happen with the baby. Dude. And he didn't want that. I don't I don't I don't know Sam anymore. You know? What? Like that's how I it makes me feel. Like I don't know his motive. I don't know whose side he's on. I don't know 
who this dude is who's kept his um, existence a secret from Dean for a fucking year. Mm-hmm. Who is this guy? I don't. I don't know. I don't know you anymore. Well, and two things about that. One is that I don't really know what Sam's motives are either. Like, are Sam's motives um, uh, his own? You know, like, right. like, okay, let me put it, no, that's, let me put it yeah. this way. Like, are they, uh, does he have allegiance to Dean? Does he have allegiance to Samuel? Or does he have some uh, personal motive that we haven't really even seen yet? Right. And maybe it's like secretly against Samuel, but he can't let on about it to Dean. Right, like some double agent shit. I could dig it. Yeah. But, yeah, we don't really know. And that would make sense. Like, that would explain this behavior. Um, but he's acting very strange. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And well, and the other thing that I had wanted to bring up, mm-hmm. um, just because someone tweeted at us, James or at Bemnar on Twitter asked, how much resentment would you hold if your family member did not tell you when they were back? Thank you. Great question. Um, that would be really hard for me to get over. Yeah. Like like a lot of resentment. I, I'm still not over it. He's not even my brother. <laughs> this is fictional. <laughs> and I'm I just brought it up just now. Like, what the fuck, man? And it's been two episodes. Yeah. Yeah. I just uh I I do not see a valid excuse for that. He's trying to say that it was because Dean had a life and he wanted him to get out of it. He's never gonna get out of it, and you fucking know that. That's that's a bullshit excuse because it could never totally be that way. And he 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 knows that. How could Sam not know that? Yeah. I don't know. He's experienced it himself. It always catches up with you. Right. And is Dean, you know, I, I think I posed this question the last episode we did. Is Dean really better off not knowing that you're alive? no yeah and obviously it's a hard question but i i don't know it's tough because i play devil's advocate to this i i think that sam's intentions were in the right place i think even though of course yes like sam is right that um or i'm I'm sorry that you're right that sam should have told Dean or like you know obviously Dean was hurting that he was you know he was missing Sam and there was a lot maybe a lot less pain that Dean could have gone through I also do think like we're seeing the result of what it means for him to reveal himself to Dean you know Dean was living a a comfortable normal life and then now Dean came in and I'm sorry, Sam came in and now Dean's like afraid for his family and he's being attacked by gins and like, I think we're seeing the repercussions of Sam intervening with Dean's life. Well, to play devil's advocate to that, Sam's not the one who pulled him back in. Dean was attacked by a gin. That is true. Mm-hmm. Sam just happened to be there to help him. I I don't think, even if Sam had died, if there were still monsters around and other hunters, they would have found Dean someday. It, it doesn't, I feel like it doesn't matter what you do. It's always going to find you. Yeah. Yeah, the blame is not all on Sam in this. Right. Mm-hmm. But... I don't know. I mean, I I think um, I think Sam was being naive, and you're you're probably right that he had the best of intentions, but 
he didn't really think it through. Mm -mm. So that's another weird thing for new Sam. But um, yeah, I don't, I don't know, you know, good question, but I think, I think it was a bad move. <laughs> So Sam and Dean leave the compound and we cut to what looks like, you know, sometime later and Samuel is by himself talking on the phone to someone and saying, no, I didn't catch it. I filled it full of bullet holes. We'll find a way to catch it. Sure. I'll bring it to you. Gift wrapped. And then he hangs up. Ooh. Yeah. Who was he talking to here? Dude. I don't know. But he's clearly shady as fuck. Yeah. We were already <laughs> feeling the shade, but this is this is basically confirming everything <laughs> that we were scared of. Shade confirmed. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, Dean comes home and uh, talks to Lisa and she says that Ben's out on a bike ride. And he kind of like looks scared and she's like, what? You know, like we got to live our lives. So they start talking and Dean is conflicted because he doesn't know if he should stay and protect them or get as far away from them as possible to protect them. And I liked this conversation because, you know, he really kind of like breaks down and gets real with her and, and they actually like really talk about it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. And he says that he's turning into his dad and it's not him. Um, it always scared him when John was like that and he doesn't want to be that way. And Lisa is really honest with him. She says she doesn't know which option is safer either. But she's like, I know you're not a construction worker. She's just the fucking bomb. And she says, you know, if there's a rule that says things have to be either or, how about we break it? She says, you know, me and Ben will be here. You can go do your thing and come see us whenever you can. But basically, you're a hunter and you need to do that. And then there's no kissing. Oh, my God. <laughs> she I... just like fulfilled all of his dreams and is telling him to go be himself and don't worry about us. And I love you and we'll always be here for you and I'll wait for you. And they're not going to kiss. And she's the best person ever in the whole goddamn world. Yeah. And in this whole damn supernatural universe. And I love her so much. Yeah. No kissing. <laughs> just... She's amazing. Just saying. I know. She is amazing. So perfect person for Dean. That's for sure. And then we cut to the last scene, which is Dean like real dramatically unveiling the Impala while Smoke on the Water by Deep Purple plays. And they're like really extra cool shots of the car. And... Mm -hmm. Then Dean gets up and looks off into the distance and it cuts. It's like, damn, yeah. he back. Yeah. And he seems like excited about it, you know, like not that he's dreading it or anything. Maybe. Right. Looking forward to it. Mm -hmm. And so another thing that I had to note, which was so awesome, is that um, Smoke on the Water played at the end during the scene, <laughs> but... The opening chords of the song are what Dean is humming to the baby when they're in the motel. Oh, <laughs> that's so cute. Isn't that great? I love that. No. So that's our episode. He's back in business. Yeah. And we'll see what happens. I just, I'm so glad that they did take that route. You know, it, it really could have in it on any other show it would have ha it would have been that either or situation yeah like either you're here with me or you're out hunting and then we would have like never seen lisa ever again right but instead it's it's she's just so open she she just she really fully accepts who dean is and that he is this hunter 
and this is just such a great example of that Mm -hmm. um and she she accepts him and knows what he is and loves him for it yeah 100 percent. so awesome yeah i hope we we see her again in the future when he like comes back to say hi or something yeah i think that was a great way to leave off that episode and it I, again like the alpha shapeshifter stuff like bothered me sure mm-hmm. i was super annoyed by samuel and the campbells but i think it's just that just annoyance um but overall i think it's a good episode yeah i thought so too I really, I thought I was going to hate it. I, Netflix kept bringing up as the the episode photo, this still of Dean on the phone holding the little black baby with like all the goo stuff all over it. And I was like, ew. <laughs> like, did he just deliver a baby or yes, something? Yes, what is happening in this episode? It feels like it's going to be gross. Yeah. So I just thought it was going to be really nasty and I set myself up for the worst, but it was very enjoyable so i don't know i don't know uh where we're feeling it on the ranking i'm kind of i don't know yeah i'm kind of looking mm, like Like about a 10 to 15 radius around Mm -hmm. like 43, you know? Uh, Oh, yeah, yeah. I was right. Let's see where I just saw a monster movie. And I was just thinking about that one recently and how I enjoy it. Oh, that one's one's 63. Yeah, 63. Hmm. it's right around here I feel like anywhere from like maybe 50 to 65 sure yeah now that I'm honing down on those because we do have some really great episodes there um around like 48 to 50 like devil's trap a very supernatural Christmas yeah Point of No Return is really good. Um, and then we have some that I think, I, I feel like that's a really wide gap between Point of No Return and Jump the Shark. And Sin City. Yeah. I agree. And I feel like this one's better than those. I I like it better than Sin City for sure. And probably better than Jump the Shark. Yeah, sames. We could do that. Have it be the new 51. Because I... I... Yeah, A Very Supernatural Christmas. Which one was Point of No Return? What happens in that one? I think that might be the one where um, they go and try to fight Zachariah and then he blows up and then adam gets grabbed by um michael ah okay yeah oh yeah wow that is a wide gap right yeah weird okay i'm down for this being the new 51 so uh season six episode two two and a half men is going in as the new number 51 And this one's going in the trunk. Cool, man. Sweet. Yeah, that's a nice spot for it. Yeah, it feels comfortable. (laughs) (laughs) Um, No son of a bitch in either of these episodes. No. Um, No tears. None none from Sam. None for Sardine. So... Nope. And did you get the, do you know the name of the next episode? 
Yes. Okay, the next you. episode is called The Third Man. Ooh, which is an excellent classic movie. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, it was really uh, very popular and famous when it came out. Um, I had to watch it for my film noir class, but I had already seen it because I used to live with my mother and she likes Turner classic movies. Um, mm -hmm. But it's a really good movie. I need to watch it. I, um, I recommend I think the only Orson Welles I've seen is Citizen Kane. Is that true? Maybe. <laughs> Maybe I've seen more, but... <laughs> That's the main one. It's a good one. Yeah, I, I recommend to anybody. It's not nearly as long as Citizen Kane, so it's kind of a good uh, introduction, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, we're um, going to be getting into that, the third man, whatever that can mean. Um, and hopefully, if, if this episode is any indication, then... Um, it'll just get better from here because we really hated episode one. <laughs> That's so true. But this, this was definitely an improvement. Yeah. Okay. Well, anything else before we wrap up? No, I think that's everything. Alrighty. Uh, well, y'all know where to find us. Forgive me. I'm losing my voice, so I'm not going to run through it all. But if you need a reminder of everything, you can... Uh, check us out at www.highwaytohell.com, right? Or is podcast on it? Um, Highwaytohellpodcast.com. Thank you. And uh, <laughs> it's been a little while since our latest. And uh, thank you for listening. We're so glad to be back. It's going to be a good season. Yeah. And until next time, we'll see you on the Highway to Hell. Bye. Bye. Hashtag daddy bean. Natural born dad. <laughs> <laughs> How now brown cow?